Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so today I have the, uh, the privilege of laying out uh, the case for a consumption tax. Um, this isn't always the most popular of policies, but I think that once you get into the details and the various options, you see that it's perhaps uh, the best way out from a, a fiscal perspective. Um, let me talk about why we need to be talking about a VAT. And the reason is that tax reform is inevitable. It's going to happen. Uh, people talk about all the reasons and the roadblocks that we won't get tax reform, but ultimately this chart behind me shows exactly why tax reform has to happen, and that's because we have a long-run fiscal imbalance. The VAT is a primary re revenue source in the OECD. Uh, it's used in about 150 countries. It's used in every other OECD country except for the United States. Uh, it accounts for about 20% of government revenues in the OECD. Um, it's very much like a sales tax in principle, but it has much better tax administration. Uh, it exempts exports and capital income, but it's moderately regressive. And so a lot of the opposition you see coming from a value-added tax is that it hits the lower-income households who don't save very much the hardest. And we'll talk about that in more detail later. How does a typical VAT work? Uh, all sales by businesses are taxable. Business packs on tax invoices to purchasers. The countries in the OECD that have a VAT all but one have what's called a credit invoice method, where uh, when a company sells something to another company, it uh, prints an invoice and it says the VAT paid on it. The company paying the VAT then takes that and can use it as a rebate later. And this is important from an administrative standpoint because it gives companies an incentive to stay within the formal economy. Because as, economy, because as, a, as a business, if you pay a tax, uh, and you get this receipt that says you've paid it, and you can claim it as a rebate later, it gives you an incentive to stay in this, in this cycle. We don't have these incentives with a retail sales tax. The problem with the retail sales tax is it gives companies and consumers an incentive to avoid paying the tax in the first place. With a VAT, all the incentives are in the right place. Uh, it's basically a self-enforcing mechanism for companies to stay within the formal economy and to pay the tax. Um, Expos exports are zero rated. What does zero rating mean? It means that uh, you still go through this process of getting this invoice and paying the tax and getting a rebate, but at the very end, you can just basically, the effective tax rate is zero. So if you're exporting, you can essentially claim a credit for all of the taxes paid when you export. That's what a zero rating is. Some, com some countries use zero rating on goods they don't want to charge a VAT on. Some countries use a zero rating on things like medicine or education. Uh, that varies a lot across the OECD. But zero rating allows for us to stay within this formal economy, within the structure of businesses paying taxes and then claiming rebates, uh, but it allows you to achieve a zero rate at the, at the end of the whole process. Imports are taxable. And ideally with the VAT, uh, the tax base equals domestic consumption. That means ideally with the VAT, you want to have as low a rate as possible and tax as many things as possible. At the state level in the United States, we have sales taxes and states typically don't tax services. They don't tax a lot of goods. And what does this mean? This means that when you're buying a product, you end up having this uh, sort of differential where let's say I have a plumber come to my house, I'm not gonna pay him for the services that he provided, but I may pay, I'll probably pay a tax on the sink that I purchased or whatever materials were used uh, as part of the plumbing services. And that creates a distortion, and you don't want that. You want to tax as much as possible so you can have as low a rate as possible and have as few distortions as possible. The revenue yield of a VAT. The VAT is a real workhorse when it comes to revenue. It collects an enormous amount of revenue. Uh, from a public finance perspective, if you go back 60 years, uh, essentially no OECD countries had a VAT. France was one of the first adopters of a VAT. This is kind of a remarkable change. Over the past 50 or 60 years, we went from basically no, no countries having a VAT to basically every country except the United States having a VAT. It's a remarkable change, and the reason this has happened is because the VAT's a very efficient way to collect revenue. From an economic perspective, and we'll talk about this in a bit, uh, but it's, it's very effective at, at collecting revenue. It creates less distortions than other types of taxes. And most countries have realized that, although the United States has not. Scandinavian countries have very high rates of VATs. It's around 25%. Uh, the lowest rates in the world are at 5%. The big countries that have a 5% rate, Canada, Japan, Singapore also has a 5% rate. Uh, and later I'll propose a, a low five-rate VAT for the United States. How much, how much revenue does a VAT yield? Well, a rough rule of thumb 
is that each percentage point of the VAT yields about 0.3 to 0.4 percent of GDP and revenue. Um, this means that a 10 percent VAT would raise around 3 percent of GDP and revenue. From a budget perspective, that chart I showed you at the beginning, that would basically fix everything. We'd still be in a balance in the long run, but it wouldn't be nearly as severe a problem. We wouldn't worry about budget deficits like we do now. Uh, if we got some spending constraint on the other side of the budget, we could basically get ourselves out of this fiscal mess with a 10 percent VAT. Alternatively, you could have, uh, well, I'll talk about specifics with the VAT later. But the point is the VAT raises a lot of revenue.